Hi there. Regulars to the channel will know that I periodically revisit things I've done in the past, either to check that they're still working or perhaps look at ways to address them from a different angle. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to have a look at the lay the field strategy. Minute. And uh, I'm going to look at it to create hopefully a more nuanced approach rather than the blanket all lay the field just before the off cross your fingers and hope two of your runners are matched during the race. What we're going to do is automate the procedure so that Fairbot tries to estimate if the end of a race is a competitive race and therefore a good candidate for a lay the field strategy at which point it will submit the lay the field. So you'll see I've got an empty um, demo strategy set up. Let's just add a rule in there. And this is going to be submit LTF. And we'll set that up relative to playtime. The action will be lay all. So we need to choose lay there, fixed odds of Let's place the lay at 1.7. Obviously, this is a figure that you might want to chop and change depending on what you're trying to do. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll go with 1.7. Usual story of 100 pounds, lay state liability, and bet persistence is not required since this is going in uh, in running. It is now in play. If I switch to uh, the conditions tab, we need to set up some conditions for this to work. The first thing that we need to do is actually utilize the market race timer. We don't want this rule to do anything until towards the end of the race. So we need to set this up so that the, the remaining percentage I would recommend you use is less than, let's say, 20%. Now that's just a, a ballpark figure. It's uh, just a guesstimate at the moment. It's a figure that you will need to play around with and test to hone in on the best value. In addition to that, however, if we left that as it is, this rule will carry on monitoring the market right to the very end. And you may not necessarily want that. So you may want this rule only to be active and potentially submitting lay the field bets during a, a specific split window. So you can use the market race timer once again uh, and this time we want the remaining percentage to actually be greater than and let's say 10%. So in other words the market race timer must be sitting between 10 and 20% left in the race for this rule to do anything. So those two figures like 10% and 20% are two figures that you should feel happy to play around with to try and hone in and tune, uh, fine tune this uh, strategy. Now, in addition to that, we need to actually specify the real condition that's going to be doing all the work, and that's the selection of relative odds. This condition allows us to compare the odds between two runners. So, what we're going to do first of all is look at Whatever runner is currently shortest in price, so that will be the favourite. And another runner whose current back odds are second in price. So in other words, we're looking at the first and second favourites as the odds are at that time. They can obviously chop and change. And when that condition is met, uh, the, the lay of the field will be submitted. But we need to make sure that we set up the comparison between these two sets of odds for these two runners. So let me just run through and pop in the figures and then I'll explain why, because this section here is, isn't necessarily counterintuitive. Okay, so I'm going to take the selection A's, that's the favourite, and I want their odds to be greater than selection B's, the second favourite. Now that doesn't make sense, I know. 
But keep in mind that this section here allows you to create what I'd refer to as adjusted odds for selection B. So let's say, for example, we want the front two runners in the market, not necessarily the front two runners on the track, but the front two runners in terms of odds. We want them to be within 0.5 odds of each other. So you can do that by specifying best back odds for selection A must be greater than or equal to best back, sorry, selection B's best back odds adjusted. And they're going to be adjusted down the way by 0.5 in terms of odds. Okay, so this section here essentially represents adjusted odds for section B. So if section A, i.e. the favourite, has odds of 2, and section B, the second favourite, also has odds of 2, clearly it's a very close race. But we need to take into account the adjusted figure. Okay, so... Let's assume section B, a selection B, is odds of 2.5. Take away the 0 0.5 and selection A, or the favourite, has the same odds as the adjusted odds of the second favourite. So clearly, it's a close match. But if selection B's adjusted odds are 1.9, in other words, his real odds are 2.4, again, the favourite is greater than the adjusted odds of the second favourite. So again, the two are within our predefined limit of 0 0.5. But if selection B, the second favourite, his current odds are 2.6, his adjusted odds are 2.1, and the back odds of the favourite are 2. In other words, they're not bigger than the second favourite's adjusted odds which means that the two are too far apart. So that was a long-winded explanation for something that, on the face of it, should be fairly simple. It's not particularly intuitive, but once you see it explained, hopefully uh, it should come to you fairly quickly. So again, along with this 10% and 20%, this 0.5% is also a figure that you might want to adjust. Now, whilst I'm on this screen, let me throw in something else to you. You don't just need or have to compare the first and second. You could compare the first and third. Increase that figure, let's say, to 1.5 or whatever. So now you're making sure that the favourite and the third favourite are within a certain distance in terms of odds. And by definition, because you're checking the first and third favourite, the second favourite must be somewhere in between. And you might want to use that as a way of measuring how competitive the race finish is. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to leave that at 2 and that at 0.5. Okay. Now, another thing that you might want to add in here is the fixed odds of the favourite. So again, choose by position back odds. Uh, back odds greater than, let's say for the sake of this exercise, odds of two. In other words, the lay the field bet will not be placed unless the odds of the favourite is greater than two. We're placing a lay the field bet at 1.7, if you recall. So we don't necessarily want to place that lay the field bet the if the odds of the favourite have already dropped below 2. So that might, again, that's another figure that you might want to play around with. Even, even delete it altogether, uh, for example. But that's something you might want to look. So that's... Um, that's essentially it for the meat of the strategy. That's the thing that's going to do it all. There are a couple of things I'd like to flag up to you while I'm here. Whenever you are doing anything with the race timer, you need to do one of two things. Either open up the, uh, the market 
before the market starts or at the very least assign the market to the market watch list as well. If you open up the market after the market has started, after the race has started, Fairbot doesn't know when the race started so it can't make the race timer calculations so that these things here would fail because Fairbot can't work it out. So one of the ways that you could do that is by adding in an additional rule that will simply switch to this market. So you might want to set that up relative to the start time. The action is going to be, uh, where are we? Switch market, show market I should say. And you can also specify conditions. For example, you might want to make sure that the market volume is, is greater than, I don't know, let's say 75,000. You might also want to make sure that the market at the moment is not in play when this switches. And we can move that up a bit in order. In addition to that, you are probably aware that I like to have audio warnings during my, my horse racing. So let's stick a couple of those in. Uh, so we'll put in this one here that's going to play 50% elapsed. So that will be relative to the in play start time. The action is going to be play a sound. And the sound will be 50% elapsed, that one there. And the conditions, if I didn't specify a condition, that message will play right away. So we need to set up a condition with the market race timer and make sure that the elapsed time or elapsed percentage is equal to or less than 50%. And again, we can move that up. Now, if I copy and paste that to create another one, we're going to create another one that's going to display another message that tells me that it's at the stage where Fairbot's looking to place the field. So if we edit this rule again, And in this case, we are going to play um, entry point approaching. These sound files are available for download on the Dropbox section if you're interested. And again, we're going to play sound, but the sound is going to be a different one. It's going to be that one. And again, we need to set up a different condition. So what happens is we wish to play this message when there is less than or equal to 25% left in the race. And again, we'll move that up a little bit. Now, a couple of things I should point out to you. Sorry, I've put that as 25. It should be 20. Beg your pardon. Let me just Chop back to change that. So you'll see that we've got this statement here, this condition remaining percentage less than or equal to 20%. What you can do is change that. And remove it. And instead, add in a real number of executions. Uh, we're looking at play entry point approaching. And that should be equal to one. In other words, that rule has executed. What does that do for us? What that means is that As far as operationally, there's no difference between the two. But from our admin side of things, if you ever want to change that entry point, you only need to change it in one place here. 
so I can go in and change that to 25% and so now that 25% will affect the actual submission of the LTF. So that's another thing that you can do along with displaying or playing audio warnings and the like. Okay, I think that's more or less it. I think we need to uh, test this against a race. So let me just save that. And this next race up is the... So one at Ballandrow, let me just check that first. Yes, it's up in two minutes, but it's kind of low on volume. So we'll go to Bath, which is a five furlong, and that's available uh, in 10 minutes. So first of all, let me just assign the strategy. And we'll switch to a different race. Something that's already gone. And we'll come back just in time for that race to switch and display automatically. Now before that race starts, did anybody spot my mistake? That should be greater than or equal to 50%. No prizes if you got it right. Okay, so we'll come back once the race starts. Okay, the market should be switching fairly soon. Let's just remind ourselves of the strategy while we wait. So as long as the market has 75,000 in it prior to the start, it will switch to the market and we'll then get some messages displayed. One of the things that you may also want to do in actual fact is do another number of executions condition but this time refer to switch to this market. Uh, and that makes sure that this rule isn't going to fire if for whatever reason the market hasn't been switched to. Um, so there you see it just switching just now. If I go in and uh, edit this one, we should have plenty of time to save it. So if I pull that one back up, do the conditions, add condition, rule number of executions, and this time it is the switch to this market, needs to be equal to one. Click on OK and save. We should be good to go because this rule has already fired. This will be flagged up as one, so we're OK. Right, so it's really just a case of watching and seeing. Now I've got the show condition values on. Uh, so you'll be able to see what the current conditions are as the race progresses. So it's always worthwhile if you're developing a, uh, an automated strategy to make sure you have the show condition values on because it can help in your troubleshooting uh, if there's anything that doesn't look quite right. Okay, so in the process of loading, we'll just hang fire just now. In fact, let me just pause it for a little bit. There's no need to watch the whole race. Okay, we're a quarter of the way in, uh, and you can see the conditions here. Uh, the two odds between first and second favourite are not close enough yet, so that's why it's showing up in red. You should hear. I don't know if you heard that. My volume on my speakers are too low. But you can see that that's triggered. That's been met. Coming up to 25% now, so this one, hopefully I've turned the volume up so you might hear it. Entry time approaching. But you can see, this guy's run away with it. The second favourite's not really near him. And consequently, nothing was submitted. Now if you'd done that in the conventional way, i.e. stuck your lay the field beforehand, you would have lost your money. Yeah, because only one runner would have met the 1.7 requirement. So that's why I'm trying to introduce this. 
as I said before, all these figures, the 25% here, the 10% here, the 0.5, the 2, you should play away and play around with them, as well as the sorry, the 1.7 as well, that's the, the lay price that you're going to be looking at. You should play around with them to try and hone in. But that that actually did what it's meant to do. In other words, it didn't submit a lay the field bet because it wasn't a competitive finish. So let's try one more race. Uh, let's do a longer one this time um, and hopefully we'll, we'll see a, a competitive finish. Um, but it doesn't really matter if we don't. The whole purpose is that we don't submit a lay the field bet if it's not competitive. And that was a, a perfect example of uh, what this strategy is all about. OK, let me just find another race and we'll, I'll get to that momentarily. Right, I've missed out the first third of this race, no point in watching that. Um, I've adjusted my speaker volume, so hopefully you'll hear the audio announcements when they're made. Uh, again, I draw your attention to the condition section on the right hand side, uh, where you can see when conditions are actually met or not. So the important thing to remember is that uh, this routine is designed to avoid placing lay the fields if the conditions are right, specifically if it doesn't look like... Oh, sorry, I was talking over the audio. I don't know if you heard that or not. Um, it's of trying to avoid situations where it doesn't place a lay the field when it's a competitive race or a not competitive race. And it may actually take quite a few iterations of playing around with the settings to get it to actually place a lay the field in the first place. But we'll see what it's like in this two and a quarter mile race uh, and then we'll just leave it there. I'll leave you to play with it. So we're coming up to the 25% point now. You can see the odds are actually quite close. Entry time approaching. Right, there's the entry time approaching. The odds were close just at that went, and you'll see that that rule has executed. And there's our lay of the field. Now that may be something that you want to adjust, because those odds when the 25% thing came, we're sitting very close together, but quite high. So that's something that you may want to, to look at, reducing this 25%, or indeed putting a, a requirement in here to make sure that the odds mustn't be bigger than three, for example. So in this case, it looks like you know, we've got one that's been matched, um, we need this chappy to come down, but it doesn't look like it. So this uh, plays the LTF, but it doesn't look like it's going to be successful. But So that's what I would suggest that you do, is first of all, reduce that figure, um, probably down towards 15, I would imagine. And you might want to put a maximum odds, just like we've got a minimum odds for the favourite, you might want to put a maximum odds for the favourite in here as well. Um, so that, that would limit those situations where high odds that are close together actually triggers the LTF going in. But I'll leave you to play with that to your heart's content. You've seen the mechanism, uh, you just need to play around with the settings to find something that works for you. Okay guys, thanks very much. Speak to you later.